and their present order and greetings in the precious and massive name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are here on tonight, this evening, on our terrific Tuesday night Christian education Bible study. Thank God for all of our viewing audience from far and near that's a part of this ministry. Amen. That's been praying for us, been sowing seeds financially into this ministry. We thank God for you all. Amen. Everyone who is viewing on tonight. Amen. We're bringing you greetings from the Greater Works Apostolic New Life Center in the city of Champions. That's Inglewood, California. Amen. We're going to get started. First, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this terrific Tuesday Christian education Bible study. We thank you, Lord, right now for blessing your servant to decrease that your word may increase in the hearts, the minds, and the spirits of your people. We thank you, Lord, for salvation in your word. We thank you, Lord, for victory in your word. We thank you, Lord, for understanding of the apostles' doctrine of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We appreciate you. We magnify you. We glorify your name. Give us an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to his people and to the church. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Thank you, God, for you all once again. We're going to get started giving honor to God who is ahead of our lives, giving honor to our pastor and first lady, the angels of this house, District Elder Forest Day Fikes, the first and evangelist, the evangelist lady, Valerie Fikes. Amen. We thank God for them both and giving honor to my wife, Mr. Melissa. Amen. We are thrilled and excited to be before you once again. Amen. Uh, we know that God has a word for his people on today. And we're going to go to the book of 2 Timothy. <clears throat> Starting at chapter number 1, verses 7. I was inspired by the Lord to read this familiar passage of scripture. Amen. I have to give a shout out, amen, to the Pentecostal churches of the apostolic faith, amen. We had a grandiose time in our midwinter uh, our holy convocation, amen, virtually. And we also had a great time on yesterday. I was a part of an international uh, prayer uh, service, amen, virtually. And it was phenomenal. So I want to give a shout out to my brothers and sisters in Christ, amen, uh, Elder Virginia. Bowie and uh, uh, Dr. Virginia King and uh, Pastor Germany, uh, Bishop uh, Buford, uh, uh, Pastor Miller and Martin, all the saints that were in attendance, amen. Uh, First Lady uh, Evangelist Verla Evans and all of the saints. Uh, we had a great turnout and I was definitely encouraged. I was inspired, amen, to be side by side in spirit, virtually, amongst the people of God, the body of Christ. And I am, I am an advocate of prayer, and we had a host of prayer warriors. And I thank God for their, uh, their prayers and their encouragement. Uh, I definitely felt stronger and empowered. So we're going to go into the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy. And we're going to start uh, chapter 1, verse number 7, and it reads. <clears throat> and it reads, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of a sound mind. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. One of my favorite scriptures 
amen, in the word of God, and I live by that scripture. Because I was one growing up at a certain point in time in my life was fearful, fearful of the unknown, fearful of achieving greatness, fearful of walking into my apostolic authority, fearful of failing, fearful of being perfected in God. And I remember my parents showed me that scripture. And I remember I start to understand what it meant and apply it to my life. And my entire world was changed. Because if fear is an enemy to God, amen, it encompasses doubt. It encompasses worry. It encompasses a lack of confidence that you can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens you or I and us. So fear is always going to tell you the opposite of what God can do. It's true. You can can mess up. It's true. You can, I can have issues and not be the very best that I can be. That's true, but in God all things are possible. That's why God has to be applied to our lives on a daily basis to make up the errors that mankind cannot do. So there are certain things that you cannot do naturally, physically, mentally, and emotionally. But in God, it takes your abilities naturally and it heightens your abilities spiritually. Because when God is in control of you and I and us, that's Spirit is heightened in us. So it's not even you doing it, it's God through you. Does that make sense? Amen. So we got to give him glory because he gives us an uncanny ability yes. to conquer fear and whatever poisonous ideas that the devil tries to give us to sabotage our blessings. I'm excited already. Amen. Tonight's lesson is faith over fear. My coming out party. That was our theme yesterday in prayer. Faith over fear. And I'm just adding to that because it really, really affected me because it was such a powerful word. Faith over fear. My coming out party. See, you have to understand that fear is a crippling effect, both physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. It will paralyze your better thinking. Hmm, what are you saying, Alfred? the second. If it paralyzes you, that's, maybe that's why God said he didn't give you that spirit, mm -hmm. which is called fear, because it's a spirit. Because something comes over you and it's not of God. Jesus. Fear will tell you you can't make it. Fear will tell you back up, back up, not go forward. Back up, back up. Don't do it. Don't do it. Even if it's to help you. Why would give you a spirit to tell you you can't do it. Mm. The reason of the power that's endued inside of us called the Holy Ghost, that's why we need to receive it because that spirit is a constant reminder of who God is. Mm. That spirit is a constant reminder 
you when you don't have your cell phone to call 911 and you, you don't have access to the paramedics, you don't have access to the police department, amen, you don't even have access to the mothers of the church. But what you do have access to is the Holy Ghost power. All right. Direct communication to God. Amen. I remember growing up watching Batman, the old school Batman and uh, Robin. And I, I, I remember how, and they had the Joker and they had the Penguin and they had Eartha Kitt as, you know, Catwoman. And so I remember how uh, they were very symbolic when you are in dire need of help. And when all, you know, uh, 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 craziness breaks lo loose, they had a specialized phone that was able to contact directly to Batman and the Batcave. And that phone was ready. So whenever you needed something and you, you just, you, you can't get to nobody else in Gotham, you had the bat phone. But I had something greater than the bat phone. I have the Holy Ghost. That power is dunamis. That power will help you live right, think right, act right. That power is the number one power in the spirit realm and in the natural setting. In other words, that power is the only power that can actually take over Satan. That Holy Ghost power, the power of God in you and I, is the only power that can turn over death back to life. That power is the only power that can allow you to tread upon serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. Amen. Where fear will tell you, don't go forward so your life can be saved and changed. The Holy Ghost says you can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens you. Amen. That, that fear demon, that fear spirit, amen, once it overcomes you, it will mess up your better judgment. That's why it makes more sense now as a seasoned saint that the Bible talks about in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 7, for God. So right there it tells you who authorized the power that you need to succeed in Jesus. He tells you right there that I authorized this power that you need and that is going to give you strength to overcome whatever trepidatious uh, things that Satan brings your way. Because we're going to get into the lesson. But God said, amen, through the letters of Paul to Timothy, his protege, amen, he said, for God hath not given you or given us the spirit of fear, mm -hmm. but of power and love and of a sound mind. What does that mean, being broken down? The first thing he said is that he's given you power. What does that mean? Authority. What does that mean? Momentum. What does that mean? He's given you energy. Amen. What does that mean? You have a force that he has sanctioned for you and I to have. See, fear saps out power. Mm. Fear is the opposite of everything God represents. Fear says God is weak. Fear says God is not going to save you, heal you, deliver you. 
rescue you. Fear says you can't do it. But God's word speaks expressly against everything that Satan says. Opposite. You can't do it. Yes, you can. You can't be saved. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can't be healed. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I know who said that. I'm not going to utter his name. But, but he, he had enough sense in the movie to say, yes, I can. Now, he got caught up a little bit. He got caught up in his snacks. He got caught up a little bit. But he did say, yes, I can. We got to start saying, yes, I can. I know I'm talking about another professor. Yes, I can. Yes, you can achieve greatness in God. Yes, you can do all things through Christ Jesus. Yes, you can put away, throw away, cast out a sinful nature. Yes, you can have faith over fear. Yes, you can preach and teach the word of God. Yes, you can put away homosexuality. Yes, you can put away uh, immorality. Yes, you can be a great father to your children. Yes, you can. Why? Because we have faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And faith over fear lets you know that it can be done. But you got to want it to work. And tonight is my coming out party. I'm going to come out victorious in the Lord. I'm going to represent not myself, but the goodness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm going to strut my steps and let them know that my steps that I'm strutting is ordered by the Lord. I'm going to let the people know that used to know how I was and how I used to be. I'm no longer that dude, that dude. I'm not those people no more because Christ has made us free. Yes. Amen. And now uh, uh, the apostle Paul, amen, to the Gentiles was writing a letter uh, while he was in prison to his protege. Brother Timothy, letting them know that you gonna come, you know, you, you gotta come in a situation of obstacles. You're gonna have some trying times. You're gonna have some wayward people that really don't want to live for the Lord despite the miraculous uh, 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 attributes that they see and characteristics that they've seen of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and working through us, they might not like the message <clears throat> of the hour, but you have to do your duty. Mm -hmm. You have to do your due diligence for God. Amen. Fear will tell you, see this is why we gotta be careful, because fear, if you're not careful, will overcome faith. Mm -hmm. And then now, you can't come out, amen, uh, uh, to represent your coming out party because fear will say you're going too fast on the fights. What are the people going to think of you? You're, 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 you're too young to be talking to where you're talking. People are, are not going to receive the God through you, the ministry of God through you. I don't think you should say that other facts. I don't think you should go into the hedges and the highways, the disgusting parts of the city where people don't care about God. God does not care about the disgusting parts of the city that you go to. That's where he wants you to go where people are in need. Whether it's a disgusting part or a clean part. If there's souls out there that need salvation, if there's people that need baptism in Jesus' name and the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside, that's who God wants to come in. 
He wants the person of a higher status too, if they want God in their lives. But we have to start going, amen, to where the multitude of souls are that need the Lord. And we all need the Lord. See, you got to go everywhere, not just the disgusting parts. You got to go to the high-end folks, too. They need the Lord. That's why Nicodemus and others that were of a higher status were, you know, talking to Jesus on the side because they were even inquisitive about salvation. We all need it. Not just a certain part of society. Amen. But getting back to what we're talking about, faith over fear, my coming out party, many of us have delayed the blessings of God and showing the world who we are because of fear. We really, some of us don't want to let people know who we are. Now, it's, it's, it's interesting to me that we can come out with all kinds of stuff. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We can let the world know that with this and that, we represent this type of organization or affiliation, and we're proud. We are proud to be whatever that we agree to be a part of. We have no uh, uh, notion of being discreet. We are bold. We walk bold and we show people this is who and what we represent. Why can the body of Christ show and display that boldness to the world? That Jesus lives from the guttermost to the utmost. That he is the one and true Savior. Amen. He is Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. It does not matter your, uh, uh, your political affiliation. It does not matter, amen, uh, uh, the, the, the mindset that you have in terms of societal, societal views. But what does matter is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What is fear? There's two types of fear. Amen. The fear that the Bible represents or references, amen, that deals with uh, uh, adoration, respect. I fear, amen, authority, meaning that I give respect to authority, and then whether it's uh, godly authority or whether it's natural authority, I'm paying homage to my parents. I, I, I'm not scared of them, but I fear their position over me as their son. Yes, I am grown. Yes, I have a wife and kids. Uh, and yes, I am living in my own uh, understanding, but because they're my parents, I honor them, I reverence them. And so that's the fear, even with God, that we have to have. We respect God. Yes, we are uh, independent thinkers. Yes, you know, we uh, can make certain decisions on our own, but we are giving God his reverence. We're letting God know that, Lord, you direct my path. Yes. That's the fear in reverence and respect and adoration to the glorious name of the Lord that we need to have. But what God does not want us to have is the spirit of fear that's considered in the dictionary distressing emotion. Sensing danger and discomfort. It might not even be danger or wrath, but it's a distressing emotion filled with anxiety, filled with 
questions of doubt and non-compliance. Fear will kill you if you allow that spirit into your life. Fear will tell you that even when help is right in front of your face, fear will tell you you can't acquire help. The way I talk to my sons, I tell them, and teaching them and mentoring them, I tell them things on the level of their understanding, but I give them godly wisdom as a father to let them know that no matter how crazy your situation is that you're involved in, I told my oldest son, Elijah, I said, Elijah, I said, if the house, God forbid, is on fire, and I said, you had nothing else to do. You can't go anywhere else but jumping out a window, amen, to your safety. I said, what would you do? And he told me before, he said, he said, Dad, I know it would hurt, but I have to believe God that if when I jump out this window, I'm going to survive. I'm going to be in a better position of safety. That was just an example. But we have to understand that when God gives us help from above, we have to overcome, amen, and cancel out this spirit that is trying to sabotage our blessings. My God. The Lord says, look, You've been struggling all these years. You've been busted and disgusted all these years. You know that you have a calling because everybody has prophesied on you. You've seen, amen, the manifestations of God through other people in your life. Those close calls, those uh, situations that God brought you out of. And I'm giving you a mandate to turn your life around. And it's funny because I was thinking how some of us, we do some of these different stunts and different things to prove how brave we are. You know, we jump off of cliffs, amen. We bungee jump, amen. We, we, we go deep diving without, you know, any kind of oxygen. And, you know, we'll uh, step over uh, heaping coals, amen, just to prove our bravery, our courage, amen. God ain't asking for all of that. He's just saying that I want your faith to be well endowed in me. I want you to have confidence like the Christian education lesson said this past Sunday. I want you to have confidence in me yes. in God's love. Yes. I want you to know that when everything else has failed, it is my love that will lift you up. I want you to know that you don't have to be afraid of achieving success in my kingdom. You don't have to be afraid in moving into the calling and what ordained you to have. Yes. You are the one that has been chosen for such a time like this. He had to, Brother Paul had to encourage Timothy that you're the one that's going to walk, not in my footsteps, but in the footsteps of grace and truth. I want you to know, Timothy, that don't be ashamed of the testimony of uh, our Lord, uh, nor of me, his prisoner. I know people are going to look at us kind of funny because they're going to say, hey, you know, uh, you're actually walking, look like you're taking notes and information from a prisoner. Amen. He locked up. What is he going to do? Amen. But they didn't realize what God was doing through Paul mm -hmm. and what Paul was doing through Timothy. He was keeping God's word alive. You can't handcuff God's word. You can't
can't go away, amen, and muzzle the messenger of God. If one person is locked up, God's going to send a few more to keep this gospel going throughout the world. You don't just uh, stop just because you are preoccupied like Paul was. The word of God just does not stop. God will raise up more believers, amen, to continue to put his word out throughout the land. Yes. There will be no excuse. And that's why tonight we're, we're talking about faith over fear. Amen. When you got faith in your mouth, you got to speak some things that are not as though they uh, are. Right. You got to say, when there is no money, you got to say, Lord, I'm believing that I have money Hallelujah. in my pocket, in my account, amen, so I can take care of my responsibilities as a grown adult. And I know that because I pay my tithes and my offerings, yes. amen, and I continue to give myself as a sacrifice unto you, I know that you're going to take care of my needs, my wants, and my desires. Faith is the substance. Faith has weight. Yes. Faith is massive. Faith is contagious. Faith is something that you can't see, but without it, it's impossible to please God. So if you can't see it, how can you believe it? Mm. Well, that's why it's called faith. Because you have to understand that faith there's hope. It says faith is the substance. It's substance to God when you have it. It's something that has weight. It holds weight when you have it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. But it's also the evidence of things not seen. So if you have faith, in most cases, you can't see, amen, the actual evidence of the faith right away because it has not materialized yet. But faith is the substance of things hoped for, the things that I want to happen that has not materialized yet, but it's the evidence of things that's not seen. So when you say, Lord, I need faith, and I'm believing in what you're giving me, amen, you are hoping that it will happen because the hope is what you need for it to happen. Amen. And so the evidence of things not seen, evidence means that you need something to say that it is what it is. Where's your evidence? Where's your proof? What, what, I don't see the substance. I don't see the material, uh, 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 the, the material of what you're asking for. What, where is it at? But faith brings it to life. Faith says that when a person, amen, is on their bed of affliction, faith versus fear over fear says, lay your hands on that person and pray the prayer of faith that by the stripes of our Lord and Savior Jesus that person is healed. Faith says that a dead person or a person who's dying can be raised up back to full recovery. Our friend Pastor Jeremy testified yesterday about her friend amen that was on her deathbed to the point where she couldn't even utter a word because the life was leaving her. But what Pastor Germany did, she did not stop believing yeah. that God could raise her friend up. You have to say, I need faith over fear because 
nobody is depending on me to believe that God can, will, and shall deliver them. That's why we got to open our mouths and let God know that I believe faith over fear. I believe even if it does not happen the way I want it to happen, but I believe that it can and it will happen. I'm not going to go with plan B with God because I'm going to stick to, amen, plan F, which is faith. Amen. If I have faith, I don't need to worry about the other alphabets behind it. I'm going to stick to the script of God's word. Faith over fear. Amen. But what if? Be quiet. I don't want to talk about the what ifs. Leave the room because you don't even believe that it can, will, and shall happen. I need you to go somewhere and sit down and fiddle your thumbs because I am in a battle spiritually and I need my faith activated. I know we talk about mustard seed faith. God says that's the minimum that you can have, but it's still doable. But it's time to have and stand on mountainous faith. Amen. I need a little more than a mustard seed, but if I just have that, God can say you can move mountains and cast them into the sea. Whatever is blocking you, amen, whatever is an obstacle in your way. The littlest amount of faith is strong enough to move that away. But as a seasoned saint, amen, in the body of Christ, when are we going to grow stronger in our faith over fear? When are we going to have our coming out party? It's time to flex in God. It's time to let people know this is what happens when you serve God. He'll bring you out. And God has brought her friend out. Her voice was restored. Her energy, her vital signs was restored. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I give God glory because he is still in the healing business. But if you let fear overcome your uh, better thinking, amen, you will lose a life. Amen. You will lose control and think that, oh, I'm just wasting my time. See, we have to sometimes step our spiritual uh, uh, warfare up. It used to be a time, and maybe I'm just old school. I'm 42 years old. It used to be a time when, you know, the saints of old would come together. Once we hear bad news, amen, we go immediately on a fast. And we, we do a midnight fast and we pray all night, amen. And we come together, amen. And we start to pray the prayer of faith for hours and days at a time until something happens on the behalf of that individual or individuals. Amen. We grease up the person that's afflicted or blessed or I know about them days. Amen. You get the oldest bottle of blessed oil. Amen. In the cabinet. Amen. That's where folks carry blessed oil all the time. Amen. You can find blessed oil in somebody's purse, in somebody's glove compartment. Amen. In somebody's backpack, medicine cabinet. Blessed oil was all over the house. Amen. But when you use that blessed oil, something happened. Faith over fear. Amen. We're not putting down medicine and saying that medicine cannot help, but that faith was so elusive that before we went to the doctor, we got prayed over. We took that cap of the extra virgin, Pompeian, blessed oil. Amen. And sometimes it was bitter when it went down our throat. And I was told that it was the virtue in the blessed oil. Amen. And it said, when you take that blessed oil in the name of Jesus, because if you just drink it, it's just olive oil. But when you pray the prayer of what? Faith. The oil ain't just olive oil no more. 
Lord. The oil is something that's called a healing elixir that you use amen, to ward off demons, that you use, amen, to get your thoughts right there, that you use over the power of the enemy. Yes. It's not hocus pocus. It's God's word being activated by faith. Faith over fear. Fear will disrupt God's word and make God's word look like mockery. That's what fear does. Unbelief. Amen. Doubt. Amen. All that is embedded in fear. That's why he didn't give us that spirit. Amen. He gave us power. Fear, amen, takes the power out of God's word. But the spirit that God gave us has power and love. Why do you need love attached to power? You should know that answer. And that is because sometimes people could be drunk with power. We already know where we're going with this. Amen. And they can use that power to usurp. Amen. Better judgment. Better thinking. Amen. And that's how corruption comes in. Because it's not of God. It's opposite of God. It's not to, amen, unify folks together. It's not to improve a status or situation. It's only to break up. That's why God attached, he had power, and then he attached the love so you can make better decisions. You can have, uh, the, the, the love is the, the compassion. You're not doing things wrong with your power when love is attached. You know how to step up to the plate and say things in the right fashion to get things across. For God's glory. That's the love. When people will leave you out of the equation, love says, no, we can use that person. That person is a part of this family. That person can be blessed. Let's, you know, uh, sometimes we look at people and they need God, but we're so upset with those people, we just maybe dislike them. And so we don't want to go to them. So we go to somebody that looks a little more to our liking. Love says they need the Holy Ghost too. Love, love says they need deliverance too. They need my spirit in them too. How are you going to pick and choose who needs to be saved? We all need to be saved. Love and a sound mind. A sound mind is cognitive spiritual thinking and cognitive natural thinking. A sound mind. You know, we're not going to do things unseemly, a sound mind. You going in circles and doing the, 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 the huckabuck is not going to cause you to be healed unless God says to do those things. But one thing I, I noticed and one thing that I'm learning continuously is that we have to practice what the Lord has put in his word an instruction for us to apply to our lives. God's word and the Holy Ghost power is not unseemly. Amen. If, if, if I have a flu, amen, and I call a prayer line for healing, and I start drinking some water, gargling it, and tell you that I'm going to spit this water in your face, I hope and pray that you have enough sound thinking to say, Lord, is this you? And my Holy Ghost should connect with the Lord and say, this is going to happen before it happens. So be obedient. Now, if I don't get healed after you spit, amen, fluid in my face, and you just had a cold or flu, that's not God. See, there's evidence behind what the word of God says to do. Did somebody ever get spat on in the word of God? Yes. Amen. The blind man, Jesus spat into the clay and put it on the blind man's eyes. Now you might say, well, he was blind. If he could see, he would have loved. No, that, that's not the point. It was Jesus. And the man had confidence based on 
all of the works of Jesus. See, Jesus is going to do the right thing. We have to adopt that same mindset. Sometimes we try to do crazy things because we think it's going to give us more likes on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. But if it's not unto God, God is not getting the glory. What we do, and only what we do for Christ is going to last. And that's why we have to have faith over fear. It's time out for the circus, you know, tricks and, 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 and trickery that's going on. We have to do what God is calling us to do in 2021. Don't allow people to get in your ear to tell you that your faith does not mean anything. You have to know that it's faith that's kept you thus far. And it's impossible to please God. Why? Because can you see God? You can see his manifestation, but you can't see him. So that alone tells you that it's the faith that has to be activated to know that he is true living. Because nobody else is doing the miracles but God. Mm. Amen. It's time for our coming out party. When are we going to come out and say that we are living for God? We got to be like a Paul. We got to be like a Timothy. Paul could have had every excuse in the book to say that I'm not going to continue in this endeavor. I'm locked up. I'm doing time. But he was also reaping what he was sowing. And that's why he had to still put out God's word and cultivate the brethren and the sisters of the body of Christ. And he had to let people know that this message has to go forward. And Timothy, you're a person that God has called. And I see his anointing power resting on you. I need you to step up to the plate. And God used Timothy. Amen. And God gave Timothy, through Paul's teaching and mentorship, wisdom and guidance of how to deal with buffoonery, how to deal with wayward how to deal with disappointment. And Paul encouraged Timothy's heart. He let Timothy know that it's okay. You can do it. It's okay. Amen. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter, amen, what it looks like. God is greater than that, than your problems. And all you've got to do is have that broken heart and that contrite spirit. All you have to do is be willing and available to come out, to let people know this is how it's supposed to go. This is what God is looking for. Amen. Faith over fear. God wants us to start speaking expressly about who he is. Putting people on notification. That is not your doctor, it's not your diet, it's not even your exercise. Those are all important entities. But it's your faith being activated and believing in the word of God. That it will happen. We have to learn how to petition God. Not talk back in a disrespectful manner. Why did he do this? Why did he put this on me? God's word says he put nothing on you than you can bear. He won't put more on you than you can bear. He already knows what your breaking point is. But what he wants to see is your faith over the fear factor. We have a fear factor when we have power that God has given us. And it should override fear. God didn't say that you'll never be nervous. Or uncomfortable. I'm sure when that viper, that snake, 
came out of that fire. Amen. When Paul was ministering, I'm sure, and it clammed on to his arm. I, 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 I'm sure that the people around him were very fearful. But because he was walking in his apostolic authority, because he was walking, amen, in the, the footsteps of the Lord, and his faith was unwavered, he just took that serpent and threw it back in the fire. Amen. The snake came out of nowhere and latched on to him. And everybody was like, after seeing the divine intervention of God through Paul and his teachings, when they saw the snake on him, oh, it's a wrap. Paul, you're a great person. Man, that was a blessed word that you gave, but you got about a couple of seconds, maybe a minute, it's a wrap. Instead of pleading the blood of Jesus against the Bible, walking in faith, praying, amen, the prayer of faith and healing into Paul. So it goes to show we have to have this thing already tuned up called our Holy Ghost power. Our faith has to be ready to counteract any venomous uh, poison, spiritual or natural, that comes in our lives. Anything that offsets the word of God, offsets family, offsets, you know, the attributes of God. Our faith has to be stronger. Faith over fear. This is my coming out part. 2021 is my coming out part. My coming out year. My coming out moment. Whatever you want to call it, call it and believe that it's going to happen. And if it doesn't happen, I have a plan B. No. God just says believe. Don't have a plan B. I believe that God is a rewarder to them that diligently seek after him. We thank God for the blessed word of God on this evening. Amen. Faith over fear, my coming out party. Amen. Uh, we want to, you know, invite or extend an invitation of covenant fellowship to our growing ministry, Greater Works, Apostolic Life Center in the city of Inglewood, California. Amen. Please visit our website and complete the form. Amen. Um, www.gwanlc.org. Amen. Uh, we love fellowship. We love, amen, our supporters virtually, amen, and also spiritually. But remember, you must be born again of the water and of the spirit according to several scriptures, but my favorite, amen, that I refer to the most, Acts chapter 2, and then verse 38 through 42. You can't be virtually born again. You have to go through the process. Born again of the water in the name of Jesus. Not just going down, submerged in water, but the name, the covenant name that was given above every name that validates your salvation is the name of Jesus. People would ask Paul, why do I need to, you know, be baptized? And he would ask the question, well, how were you baptized? Because we're noticing in this day and time, everybody is saved but they don't have salvation. Everybody is saved, but they don't have salvation. Think of it like this. You're in a boat, and, you, and you're saying that I'm saved. I got what I need for salvation. I'm saved. But if you don't have a lifeline, if you don't have a life jacket, <laughs> If you don't have a lifesaver, I'm not talking about the candy. If you don't have anything that represents your safety 
and salvation in God. Don't feel bad. Don't feel defeated. Just do something about it. Some of us are not even in the lifeboat. That's a form of safety. And we're drowning in sin. We think that the life jacket that we have that's deflated is going to keep us afloat. Oh my God. What does that mean? You have a deflated life jacket? You got a form of godliness, godliness that you're denying the power thereof. God says, get the real sincere life God. His name is Jesus. And his name is what needs to be over you as you go into the watery grave to rise up to walk into the newness of life. Amen. The old man and his deeds are in the grave. And now that you're squeaky clean, amen, from the old former ways of thinking of what you used to do, now he can give you something that's powerful to keep you living right, keep you thinking right. Amen. Your steps can be ordered by the Lord with this power that the devil can't take away from you. It's sealed into the day of redemption. That's what we're talking about. And that's what we preach. The, the death, the burial, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you don't have it, get it. Don't wait for mama, daddy, boys and girls, cousins and uncles and aunties and nephews. Get it for yourself. And then let people know that God can turn it around the city. In Jesus' name. We also have methods of giving. Amen. We thank God for the financial supporters. And we have e giving. Amen. By PayPal, give a five and cash out. We just thank God for you all on tonight. And may God continue to bless you richly. If you need prayer, if you need encouragement, we have men and women who are saved and sanctified, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and lived right that can encourage your hearts. Look in the chat box, amen. There's a number down there if you need prayer. If you need, amen, someone to intercede on your behalf, please give us a call. We thank God for you. We appreciate, amen, you viewing us on this evening. Amen. And remember these words. Whatever you do and wherever you go, please take Jesus with you. May God continue to bless you. Richly is our prayer. Faith over fear. This is my coming out. God bless you in Jesus' name.